It was a brilliant performance. Uh, and speaking of which, we're going to get to one of the most. It is uh, Mike Richards calling from Raw. Mike Richards looking for Ken Shamrock. And Ken Shamrock is here. Ken Shamrock is in the house. Ken, thanks so much for joining us here on Raw, Mike Richards. There is a huge buzz, obviously, about having you on the show because i got to tell you something, my friend. I think for as many athletes as we've interviewed in all different sports, including UFC, all the MMA, uh, professional football, it's never uh, one's life is never what it appears to be. And I think sometimes, Ken, uh, by the time you get to a point where you're retired and you start to speak, only then, I think, do people understand what can be a relatively complex life, and I think yours fits into that category, and yet you have found a- an ability, I think, to have resolve uh, for all of it, which is why I think you go out and speak, just to tell people that in order to sort of conquer life, maybe you got to conquer yourself first, Ken. Well, that's true. I mean, when you look at yourself in the mirror, that's your worst enemy and that's your best friend. And you have to look at it like that. Like, there's nothing in life that's going to just be given to you. And if it is, it's not going to last long. So you got to work for everything. you got to be willing to do whatever it takes to get there. Well, do you think for the most part, I remember my dad, who was a longtime, uh, a longtime teacher, a, a great coach, a, a phys ed man, but he also was a church organist. And I think, you know, the, 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 the complexity of that, that is why he never really quite understood, you know, things like UFC or mixed martial arts, because he thought maybe those that were involved in that sport, Ken, were coming from a place of anger. And so, I mean, they come from all different places, all different uh, origins. But to a degree, do you think there's any truth in that for those that fight for a living? Oh, absolutely. I think that's where they do come from. I think everybody kind of um, has their own way of venting that anger. Um, Some people do it through drawing or rap or whatever it is, but it doesn't make them bad. It just means like, hey, they've they've gone through some stuff in life that they're angry with. Some people do it through praise in church where they have to scream out and fall to their knees and shake. I mean, hey, is that wrong? No, it's just a way for people to be able to get that out, be able to let that sin go. And for me, it was about going in there and venting it through fighting because if I didn't vent it in fighting, then I was venting it on the street, and that was wrong. So just having a place to do that, having a place for these people to be able to vent their anger and their frustration is a good thing. Yeah, it certainly is, Ken. Ken, great talking to you this morning. We should tell our audience uh, watching across Ontario, across Canada right now, Ken's on his uh, spoken world tour uh, of uh, Southern Ontario. Friday at Don Cherry's in Kingston. Saturday in the Rec Room in Toronto. Sunday at Showtime Comedy. St. Catharines on Monday. And uh, and Curtis also at Shoeless Joe. So check those out. He's going to be in a town near you. You want to talk to him. Ken, you've already done a couple of these so far. So we're kind of in the midway point of it. What's the number one question people want to know about Ken Shamrock? Well, you know, there's a lot of of questions that they want to know about me, but I would have to say what people take away from these events is satisfaction, motivation, and and feeling like, you know, going into it, they were a little bit like, what are we going to hear? What are we going to see? But almost everything has been answered for them, and they walk away satisfied. And so I... I'm really proud of that because that's kind of been it. Everybody's kind of come to me and they've been talking to me and say, man, you, man, you motivated me, man. That story was good. And so for me, that's, that's really what it's about. It's really about giving back, letting the fans know that I appreciated them and I want to give them something back. Mike and I were talking about this on air before we, we phoned you a, a couple of minutes ago, and we were going through some of the history of your fights and the Gracie fights, the Severn fights, the Ortiz fight. Even in the last couple of years, Kimbo Slice, rest in peace. Uh, I, I know that was a, uh, an anniversary of, uh, of a couple of days ago. What's the number one rivalry you remember as far as being your Mount Rushmore moment? Yeah, I think it would have to be Severn when I actually captured the very first Super Fight title because that'll never change. Well, when I you know, again, Dave just talked about some of, some of your uh, uh, background. When I take a look at some of the wrestlers and where they come from, uh, that is whether it's a WWE now and and, and just the, it, it's amazing the the level of. I mean, we're talking about NCAA, 
uh, national champions. We're talking guys who went to Ohio State. We're talking guys who go to those big schools in Arkansas, Oklahoma, where, as you know, at uh, wrestling, they get almost as many people watching that as they do a football game. I mean, it's, 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 it's almost religion in those areas. For you, when you look at where your style came from, where, where you know, the actual X's and O's of, of how Ken Rock, Ken Shamrock fights, what is the origin of it? What are we talking about here? Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of my base comes from the street. Uh, I grew up in a bad situation, fighting for survival, fighting for my toothbrush and my razor blade. Uh, anything that I had in that home with 18 boys, you had to stand up and fight for it, or otherwise you'd get it taken. So I would have to say my core and my desire of of, of fighting came from survival, but later on, being able to refine that. Uh, it was over in Japan, and Masakatsu Fanaki was a, a big part of my training, and he helped me really understand more of the technical part of fighting. So was that intimidating then when you first started? Did you feel somehow that you were less than guys who may have had those kinds of backgrounds? Or, or are you, were you of the mindset that you didn't care? Yeah, I, I did care. Um, I was more motivated because these guys were better than me. But I had in my mind when I fought my first fight, in my mind I was saying, I, I, and, and I literally, this was a direct thought and a direct uh, the emotion that I went into was I want to be the best. Right after my first fight, it was like, I love this. I want to be the best. So then I was hitting the gym. I was staying over in Japan. I was missing my family. I made a lot of sacrifices to do it because I thought to myself, the only way I was going to be able to be able to reach that level quickly and be able to catch up to these guys was I had to work longer and smarter. That's interesting. Ken, uh, final question for me, and thanks again for doing this. We'll promote exactly where you'll be in the next three or four days after after we chat here. But uh, we had a, a question on Twitter about your career in the WWE. Why did why did it come to an end, Ken? Because wh when I was watching and you were a champion, the Intercontinental Champion, it looked like it looked like you were ready to have like a, a Kurt Angle type run where you were going to be in pro wrestling for 15, 20 years. But it, but it didn't happen. What? Uh, why did you decide? to depart from WWE at that time? Well, I think a lot of it uh, had to do with I was just on the road so much. I was missing my kids' soccer games. I was missing my daughter's, you know, dances. And so it just felt like I was missing life. Um, and so I had to go and tell them, listen, you know, I, I, I just can't keep doing this. I need a break. And I was right in the middle of my last year. And so Vince let me go. Well, you know, it, you know, you just you just said something that I think a lot of people you'll find a little jolting. It's like, you know, there's there's your son playing soccer, and you know, let's say he gets a, a yellow or red card. I think the other, other team's got to say, do you do you know whose kid that is? I don't I don't know. I don't know if you want to be bringing that card. You'll be very careful. It's like, yeah, okay. There, there's what you do for a living, and then there's the human being. And I think what you're telling us is there actually is the human being part, not always finding Kenny. Yeah, there is, you know, and there's there's that part where you have to make a decision. Even though you're you're being famous, you're making money, but you have to weigh it out. Is it worth it? Because your kids are starting to um, get angry and they're starting to act out. And, you know, your wife's telling you, hey, you know, uh, such and such got in trouble today at school because somebody said something about their dad and, you know, and then they act out and I'm not there to help this. And I'm, so there was a there was a big decision to be made there. And. And I made the right one. You never actually did. I'm just curious. Uh, you Did you ever go to Calgary? You never went to the dungeon in the actual heart house, did you? Did you ever have to go down where Stu used to put the sleeper hold on people? You never actually went down there. I did. Me and Owen Hart had a, had a match down there in the dungeon, actually. He put my head through the ceiling. <laughs> people don't realize what a crazy story it is like the like construction workers would go by ring the doorbell slew would show up what a what i'm tougher than you let's go downstairs and they would go down <laughs> and they put them in a sleeper hold i mean that was a true story <laughs> yeah me and owen put on a great match down there and uh that was really one of those highlights in my career because that has so much history 
Oh, absolutely. Well, look, I know you got to run. Uh, by the way, Curtis, that's my hometown. Maybe I'll come by. You'll see me. I'm the one uh, probably picking pockets. It's 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 been tough lately. <laughs> so, so, Kenny, thank you so much for joining us here today. I know your fans appreciate it. We appreciate it because you're you, you got a very busy schedule and you've got a really wonderful story. I love exactly what you've done with your life, and and I appreciate it. And thanks for sharing with us here today. Hey, I appreciate you guys, man. So, hey, check it out tonight, man. We'll be down there. We'll have some fun. Excellent. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. That is uh, Ken uh, Shamrock uh, joining us here. And uh, isn't that interesting? I mean, this guy's pretty honest. And I think when you're going to go, whether it's going to be, I said, out in Curtis. And so all our uh, our uh, Whippy people, all our Durham people oh, yeah. on that side, I imagine that you're probably going to be going. I think I know a lot of people will go. And I think what you're going to find is, I mean, look, we only had 10 minutes with him. But I think he said a couple things that that you may have found um, not jolting, but the one aspect that is is really apparent is that you know here's a guy who did not have a happy childhood whatsoever, and in asking him, well, you know, a lot of times in sport they will tell you that they don't get into it because of anger. You know, you used to watch what was the one on Spike TV where they had the uh, the, the two camps all the time and guys were coaching other guys. Yeah, th- uh, that's right. It's almost like a, a, a teaching well, grounds for UFC. Yeah, what was that series called? Why am I drawing a blank on this? It was huge. Uh, were they the coaches? And, and yeah, I know what you're talking. And about. so sometimes I'd look at this thing, like Bisbing. All those, guys, everyone was in it. Mm-hmm. And Shamrock was in it. Yeah, too. Shamrock like, was one of the coaches, uh, and the other coach on the other side was Tito Ortiz. Which is a big time rival. Well, of his. that was that was so, that, that got heated, and so um, you look at these guys, and you think these guys are angry. Yes, these 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 people are not happy people, and then sometimes they portray it as no, you know what we do in the ring, it's our own profession. You know, we're not really that person. He's saying he was that person and mm-hmm. didn't have a problem. He said he needed to find a place that was an outlet for the anger that had to go somewhere because if it wasn't in the ring, it was going to be on the street, and if it goes to the street. He's probably dead. Yeah, exactly. That's just how it was. We should let everybody know before we wrap up uh, the Shamrock News. Friday at Don Cherry's in Kingston. Saturday in the Rec Room in Toronto. Sunday at Showtime Comedy Entertainment. Uh, also in St. Catharines. Monday at Shoeless Joe's in Curtis. So check it out. There's also a website. It's uh, Just Google up uh, Ken Shamrock's Spoken Word Tour in Ontario, Southern Ontario. He's busy every night, and he's somewhere close to you. He could be in your backyard. That's how close it is. It's going to some of the smaller places, some of the larger places, uh, but uh, it's definitely worth sitting down, watching, having a couple drinks, and the guy signs autographs, takes pictures. Everything you need to know about Ken Shamrock will happen in one intimate setting in one night near you. What? We just become best friends. Yep. 